Well, good morning and welcome to our Summer Sunday online service this Sunday, the 11th of August. It's fantastic to be able to welcome you this morning as we worship God, hear from the Bible and pray together in our slightly shorter, slightly more snappy Summer Sundays as we are doing throughout August. My name's Chris and I'm the Vicar of Wortley and Finley and it's fantastic to be able to welcome you. These Summer Sundays are going to be slightly pacier, cut some things out, but that's fine because we can worship God uh, whether we're here for half an hour, 20 minutes or an hour as we are gathered together on a Sunday morning during August. We're going to go straight into our first hymn this morning, which is All Creatures of Our God and King.
A wonderful, wonderful hymn to begin our time with together. A fantastic cracker, a classic, really. We move now to our Bible reading, which is from the Book of Ruth. Throughout August, we're going through four Old Testament characters. Last week, we looked at the life of Moses. And this week, we are looking at the life of Ruth. Ruth, one of the Old Testament women who has a book named after her. It's not very long, so why don't you, after this service, just go and read it. Read the whole book. It's only about six or seven chapters long. You could read it in about 20 minutes, half an hour. But we're going to read from Ruth uh, chapter 1, verse 16 to chapter 2, verses 12. Ruth said, Don't urge me to leave you or turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. The overseer replied, she is the Moabite who came back from Moab with Naomi. She said, please let me glean and gather among the sheaves behind the harvesters. She came into the field and has remained here from morning till now, except for a short rest in the shelter. So Boaz said to Ruth, my daughter, listen to me. Don't go and glean in another field and don't go away from here. Stay here with the women who work for me. Watch the field where the men are harvesting and follow along after the women. I have told the men not to lay a hand on you, and whenever you are thirsty, go and get a drink from the water jars the men have filled. At this she bowed down with her face to the ground. She asked him, Why have I found such favour in your eyes that you notice me, a foreigner? Boaz replied, I have been told all about what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, how you left your father and mother and your homeland and came to live with the people you did not know before. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so we're looking at the life of Ruth. Ruth, who, uh, whose husband died and she ends up leaving her homeland to go and live with her mother-in-law. She is then uh, finds Boaz, who is a wealthy landowner, who gives her permission to glean on the side of his land. And then eventually they end up getting married. It's worth reading the whole story. In the verses we've just read, Ruth, a Moabite widow, finds herself gleaning in the fields of Boaz. Now, at first glance, this may seem like a stroke of luck, a coincidence. But the biblical narrative is clear. There are no coincidences in God's story. What seems like chance is actually providence. Ruth didn't know where she was going. She was a foreigner, vulnerable and without any social standing. But God guided her steps to the field of Boaz, a man of noble character and her eventual redeemer. This shows us that God is at work in our lives even when we are unaware. His providence is often seen in the ordinary decisions and actions of our daily lives. How often do we overlook the fields God leads us to? How often do we miss the fact that his hand is guiding us, even when we feel like we are simply wandering? Ruth was not just gleaning in any field. She was in the field of God's provision. Boaz, upon hearing about Ruth, extends extraordinary kindness to her. He offers protection, provision and reassurance. Notice how Boaz goes beyond the minimum requirements of the law. The law allowed the poor to glean the leftovers, but Boaz invites Ruth to stay in his field, to drink from his water and to receive his protection. This is hesed, the Hebrew word for steadfast love and kindness that goes beyond obligation. Boaz's kindness is a reflection of God's kindness. Boaz sees Ruth not just as a foreigner, but as a person of worth. In Ruth, Boaz recognises a woman of courage, loyalty and faithfulness. He doesn't see her as a liability, but as someone to be honoured. This is what true Christian love looks like, seeing people not through the lens of their status or background, but through the lens of God's love. Ruth's response to Boaz is one of humility and astonishment. She says, why have I found such favour in your eyes that you notice me, a foreigner? This question gets to the heart of the gospel. Why do we as sinners find favour in the eyes of God and why does he notice us? The answer lies in the character of God. He is the God who sees. He saw Ruth in her need just as he sees us in ours. And he also see, is also the God who provides. Boaz's kindness is a shadow of God's greater provision in Christ. Ruth took refuge under the wings of the God of Israel. 
The imagery of God's wings is powerful. It speaks of God as a refuge, a place of safety and provision. Just as Ruth found protection and provision in the field of Boaz, we find our ultimate protection and provision in Christ. He is our Redeemer who has bought us not with silver or gold, but with his precious blood. As we reflect on this passage, let's remember that God's providence is at work in our lives, often in ways that we do not see or understand. He guides us even in our ordinary decisions towards his purposes. Let us also be challenged to embody the kindness of Boaz, showing steadfast love to those around us, especially the vulnerable and the outsider. And finally, we can take refuge under the wings of the Lord, trusting in his provision and protection. Amen. of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear. In Him no sin is found. We stand of the Lord, the Holy One is here. And so we pray together using the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And a few notices. Well, do make sure you're signed up to receive our newsletter because that's the best way to get all the notices. We have got uh, two more weeks after this of our summer Sundays. Uh, where we have one single service in person in church at 10 o'clock and our online services are slightly shorter. But now we finish with our final song and it's a, a new one. It's called All Hail King Jesus. Say 
she crossed eternity The king of life was on the move For in a dark, cold tomb Where our Lord was laid One miraculous breath Hung with forever Thank you so much for joining us. It's been wonderful to be able to worship with you today. I do hope you can join us next week. See you then. Bye for now.